Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and I wanted to talk in this video about the INFJ heart. What is in the INFJ heart? I think that a lot of INFJs out there appear to be Enneagram type 4s and I don't think these are the only INFJs. I myself, I relate to being an INFJ type 2. And I feel like both the 4 and the 2 and the 3 of course represent imbalances in the heart, issues with the heart. Uh, the tree, Enneagram tree type, is of course uh, alienated from how they feel about things and what they dream of and what is important to them and instead they follow blindly on what society thinks is important and what society wants. The INFJ4 is scared of getting hurt while pursuing or going for what they want. So they develop strategies and thoughts and ethics and some kind of rules and principles to guard their heart. Strategies to avoid getting hurt. Then your gram 2, of course, has the imbalance of uh, catering too much to other people's dreams but neglecting their own. As an INFJ2, I find myself constantly thinking about how I can give other people what they dream of and how I can help other people realize their dreams. But I never really take enough time to think about what it is I dream of and I never take enough time to go for what I want. And um, that's always been uh, an issue for me. That's always been what I've had to process and I do believe that. With Enneagram types, all of them show unhealthy behavior. I don't think the Enneagram is about healthy behavior at all. I think it's about showing fixations that we need to overcome. And so I don't want to be an Enneagram type 2. I want to overcome it. I want to get better in touch with my own heart and to understand what I dream of and what it's important for me. And of course, I know what is important for an INFJ. The important thing for an INFJ, for an intuitive and judging type is to walk your own path in life, to go where no person has gone before, to see things that no person has seen before, to explore parts of the world that are currently hidden, parts of the ocean that have not been found yet, uh, to explore thoughts and ideas and mysteries and the mysteries of the world that we don't know anything about yet. To, the INFJ heart is about visionaries, uh, vision, about what you envision, what you see is possible but has not been done yet. So it's also about going for and becoming something and channeling something that you have seen in your own head to be possible, even if other people don't think it is possible. And that's... The thing, I think the reason a lot of INFJs are not in touch with their heart is because when you go for, and when you try to do these things, other people are so inclined to tell you it's impossible or that it's not good. I think the sensing and judging types are prone to say, oh, but why don't you just do the traditional thing? Why don't you just do something simple? Why don't you just follow in your father or your family's footsteps? I think the SP talks about the material level and material dreams and experiences and greed and uh, having and possessing and obtaining and embodying something. Uh, having what more than anyone else, obtaining more than anyone else before. And I think the um, intuitive and perceiving type talks a lot more about creativity and uh, about realizing potential and exploring opportunities and creating new possibilities and making and switching and creating things that no person has created before. And they're all wrong for an INFJ. To some extent. Now I, as an INFJ too, have one core issue and that is of course that I am more focused on creating and realizing other people's possibilities. I tend to be inclined to be like a mentor to other people. So I listen to what other people tell me they want to become and then I say this is how you do it. And then I find myself realizing 
man, I wish I had this talk with myself. <laughs> I wish I listened to myself a little more. I wish I uh, created this uh, purpose for myself as I'm able to do for other people so clearly. Um, and I think in INFJ4, I think in INFJ4 is uh, so common, so prone to getting more into that traditional route of uh, kind of uh, forming routines to respond to what it is you want. You look at what you wanted in the past as an INFJ4 and you try to go for that instead of what you're dreaming of right now. You think about what you used to want rather than what you currently want. And you don't realize as an INFJ that you are growing outside your old shells pretty quickly. You're slow, you're quickly transcending and growing and changing and developing all the time. And um, if you look at yourself more, too much from your history and what you used to want, and if you narrow yourself down too much by that, and if you try to form principles around that instead, I think you might be chasing against things that when you get there, you, you don't even want it anymore. So there are so many issues here, and I do want to talk about the worst one of them all, really. I do think the worst one of them all is probably the Enneagram 3 INFJ, and I do think these are not too common, but they are common, and to some extent still. Uh, the INFJ 3, as I've experienced, uh, is so centered on what society values, or what they think society values as a dream. They don't think about what they dream of. They don't go for what they envision. But they go for what other people see as good and what other people dream of. When other people share a dream, uh, the INFJ tree says, okay, then I will take this dream. And I will embody this dream. And I will embody this purpose. And the other person goes, hey, but this was my dream. You can't take this from me. Why are you taking this from me? But um, the INFJ tree is uh, so blind to their own heart that... They can only see the hearts of others, and not from the perspective of how they can help other people, but how they can get what other people have. This is the jealousy, uh, I feel. Like, this is the INFJ that is trying to mimic success from other people and from other people's eyes. And I have seen this uh, in some unhealthy INFJs, and I worry about it, because I feel like it's so far from what an INFJ really needs. Now, the heart is just one part of the INFJ. Of course, the INFJ also has needs pertaining to the head, and needs pertaining to security, and needs pertaining to, for example, your gut and uh, to uh, other Enneagram fixations. But I think these are the three most common, and I uh, like I said in my previous video, what I want us to do next, what I am really passionate about right now, is talking about an INFJ from different Enneagram angles. From the INFJ 9 to the INFJ 5 to the INFJ 3 to the INFJ 2. I want to embody and integrate the Enneagram with the MTI and to use them both to improve on each other's. Because... Like I said, if I, I, what I think is, if an INFJ goes and becomes fully in tune with their intuition and their judging, and is able to translate their ideas into reality and to act proactively on their visions and to create their dreams and to follow their passion, I think they are completely freed from the two and the three and the four's emotional traumas and fixations. That is when an INFJ rises beyond the Enneagram and stands atop of it, and feels more truly in tune with who they are. And I think that is the goal of the Enneagram, to become freed of your traumas and fixations, and to stand above them. That's all for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I hope it taught you something about INFJs that you didn't previously know.